Aha, <laughs> you're here. You want to know why? Ask how. Howard, the humongous. We're at a Julius Caesar moment in the United States. We're at a moment when our democracy could be yanked out from under our feet, and like the infamous frogs in lukewarm water, under whom the boiler is turned up, and they don't notice that they're about to be boiled to death because the temperature rises at such a slow rate, um, we could be losing the very foundations of our democracy now. The real problem is the National Security Agency and something new to America, a four million person strong secrecy elite, a group of people who have access to America's top secrets and access that you and I do not have. That separates them from you and me. It reminds you of the experiment Philip Zimbardo did at Stanford University many decades ago, in which he told a bunch of kids from the same college kids from the same class arbitrarily that some would be prisoners and some would be prison guards. That's all he had to say to them. These were kids who had shared a class together, who had been friends. But as soon as the prison guards were told that their former friends were now prisoners, the mere use of the word turned them into brutal, nasty people trying to subjugate their former friends, separate a secrecy elite from the rest of us by giving it access to information that you and I don't have, and you create a new aristocracy. You create the very kind of thing that the founding fathers were trying to rebel against, uh, a group with special powers. But there's more than that. There's the FISA court, the federal, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. That court works in top secret. It has the right to make laws, laws into which you and I have never had any input, laws you and I are not even allowed to know about, laws we are not allowed to know about even if we are accused of breaking them. And we are not allowed access to the information that the government has collected on us to defend ourselves. Um, this is extremely dangerous. It breaks the rules of the Constitution. You know that um, under the National Security Agency, we've been collecting billions of bits of information, um, emails, telephone calls, um, text messages from all over the world. This violates that section of the Constitution that says that no one has a right to break into your house and rifle through your papers without at least getting a court warrant. Now, not only does the NSA not have to get a court warrant in many, many cases, but when it does get a court warrant, it gets it from the top secret court, the FISA court. And the FISA court has almost never denied the National Security Agency or other security apparatus like the FBI. It has never denied them anything they have wanted. There goes that aspect of the Constitution that says that you have a right to the privacy of your personal property, and particularly a right to the privacy of your personal information. Then there's the right to be an informed citizen. The entire concept of the American democracy is based on an informed citizenry. Well, an informed citizenry is a citizenry that has access to information, especially the most vital information, the information that's absolutely necessary to make intelligent decisions. But when Bradley Manning, three and a half years ago, began to spill the beans, um, when he began to present us with the secrets that were being kept from us, he was able to release between 600,000 and 700,000 secret documents. That was just what Bradley Manning had access to. Um, then the Edward Snowden revelations began to come out. He, too, released vast amounts of information, but these are apparently only the tip of the iceberg. There are millions and tens of millions of memos, of um, factual reports that you and I are not allowed to see. Do they have any, just, just leaking them, in any way compromise our security? In my opinion, no. 
In 99% of cases, the leakage of these documents has done nothing to compromise American security. To the contrary, leaving security in the hands of the experts and keeping the rest of us blind, dumb, and in the dark, treating us as one of my clients uh, in a, one of my clients had a poster on his wall that said they must think I'm a mushroom because they feed, they keep me in the dark and they feed me shit. If that's what the American public is reduced to, there is no American democracy anymore. Yesterday, the president, Barack Obama, made a speech which was widely, widely touted as a speech in which he was going to radically revise um, the national security apparatus. And he didn't. He didn't. Um, his big announcements were that he was declassifying 40 of the opinions of the FISA court. 40 of the opinion, opinions of the FISA court, there have been hundreds, if not thousands of them by now, which have the effect of secret law. Um, he announced that instead of gathering intelligence on people who were three hops removed from a terror suspect, he was going to reduce that to people only who are two hops removed. There, was a, there were a lot of headlines saying that he was revising the system under which billions of text messages and emails are, and, tech, and phone calls are stored. In reality, the only change he made was that he said, we may keep that information stored outside of a government facility. We may. And then again, we may not. He announced that we would have a panel of outside experts who were able to sit in on the court and give the public point of view. Well, first of all, those outside experts, once they're given access to secret information, are no longer public representatives. They become captured individuals in the secrecy elite. They share more in common. They go over in, from, in Philip Zimbardo's Stanford experiment. It's the equivalent of crossing the line from being a prisoner to being a prison guard. That changes people dramatically in a simple little experiment at Stanford University. Think how much more it changes people in Washington, D.C. Um, the president, unfortunately, is not changing this NSA system. He said some magnificent things. He said last night that your right to think, to write, uh, and to communicate with others freely, your right to associate with those who you want to associate with the most. These are the vital freedoms without which there is no progress. These are the freedoms that all human progress is based on. Great statement from the president, but changing the gathering of information from third degree relationships with terrorists to only second degree relationships with terrorists, that won't cut it. The president also brought up some of the challenges that we're up against within our security system because we do need security. We don't want another 9-11. And uh, the president brought up the fact that one of the 9-11 hijackers, a man who died in the flight that crashed on the Pentagon, um, was in San Diego and made a phone call to a Al-Qaeda safe house in Yemen. The security apparatus we had at the time was able to pick up the incoming call, but it wasn't able to tell where it was coming from. If it had known that call was coming from San Diego, that would have pinpointed a suspect possibly before 9-11 can occur. But there's a small problem, and another point the president made. Al-Qaeda has a habit of setting off a bomb and waiting for people to rush to the scene to help the victims than bombing those who have rushed to the scene to help the victims. It also has a habit of simultaneous bombs, 10 bombs across the country, going off at once. It does that in Iraq. It did it in Spain. It did it in England. Um, so the president makes the point that when there's a bombing in a city, we need to be able to check immediately to see what phone connections there are so we can tell if there's a network involved that is planning another bombing in 10 minutes or an hour. Good point, Mr. President. But if the system of deep data, of big data that we are using, vast collection, and then sifting through it with dumb techniques, with statistical techniques, the same techniques that Google uses to gradually improve its search engine, if that's so good, why were we not able to detect the Boston Marathon bombers? Why did we miss them? Even though the Russians said, hey, you better watch out for these guys. They've been making some visits back here in Central Asia with some very suspicious people.
some extremists who are in to violent, violent military action. We didn't listen to the Russians. We were too busy paying attention to the wrong thing. It's not having a billion details that makes you intelligent. It's having a big picture overview that lets you put pieces in place. That's what's apparently missing from the NSA. Another vital aspect of what's been going down over the last few weeks is the pressure not to profile people. Well, what in the world do the Tsarnaev brothers have in common with the 9-11 attackers? Militant Islam. If we are not supposed to um, discriminate on the basis of religion, and if we are not allowed to put two and two together when kids like the Tsarnaev brothers spend their time with violent, militant Muslims in Central Asia, if we have to dismiss violent Islam, the motivating factor behind much of the terrorist violence going on in the world, everywhere from Kabul, where a restaurant uh, occupied or a restaurant that is frequented by foreigners has just been bombed and 17 people have been killed, everywhere from Kabul to the Philippines to Syria and Iraq. If we're not allowed to put two and two together on the basis of an extremist form of a religion, because that would be discriminating against a religion, we are putting our eyes out. We need these conceptual threads, the big pictures, that allow us to put all the dots together. We need it far more than we need billions of bits of information that flood us, confuse us, and do not point to threats or bombers, but that do threaten to undermine all of the freedoms in the Constitution of the United States of America. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make. Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous.